let's do some energetics revision. Um, so what I was going to do is just literally run through um, the key things that you should know. I'm not going to stick it all up on the board. You should know a definition of Hess's law. You should know a definition of enthalpy of formation. Actually, you should know a definition of delta H. Don't miss that one. You don't know a definition of delta H? The energy change and the constant pressure. Yeah, it's the constant pressure that, that, uh, that people forget. Uh, and then delta HC as well, of course. So enthalpy change of standard enthalpy change of formation, standard enthalpy change of combustion are the two that are most commonly tested. But but don't forget um, enthalpy change under constant pressure for uh, delta H and Hess's law. Um, just that the energy change for a process is independent of the route taken. Okay, so then we 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 get into to Hess's law itself, and we have these Hess. Diagram. So you have a reaction, whatever it is. Um, I just, just have to think of a reaction. Methane plus oxygen. Let's keep it nice and easy. Um, and yeah, it must be yes. Uh, so your Hess cycle can either work with the elements down here. So Uh, if I have some, some carbon here, 2H2s and 2O2s, and then my arrows are going up, of course, enthalpy of formation of oxygen is zero because it's already an element. Um, but we would, we would look up this data. Is it because it's most reactants? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, not forgetting to times um, the delta, uh, the formation of, uh, of water by two, because we're using the balancing numbers as well. Um, so that would just be delta H, FCH4, and delta H, FCO2. And then <coughs> delta H for that reaction is the sum of all the delta H F's of products take away the sum of all the delta H F's of reactants. So you should be able to build up a Hess cycle if the question requires it, or just trot out the equation if that's the most convenient. But remember all of this is based on you being given <coughs> delta H F data. It's the data that determines how you work out the question, not what you are working out. So for example, of course, what are we working out here? Well, that, that would be the, the enthalpy of combustion of methane. So people think, oh, enthalpy of combustion, then we do just this, this, and this. But no, you're given delta HF data, so you use that equation there. And the other way around is when we have, uh, <coughs> let's do, well, let's do a delta HF, shall we? So if we had C plus half O2 plus 3H2 <coughs> makes ethanol, not forgetting our state symbols because everything has to be in its standard states if it's a standard enthalpy. That's the equation for the standard enthalpy of formation of ethanol. Which is also a common question, right? Write, write the equation that is the standard enthalpy of formation of ethanol. That's the equation that represents the standard enthalpy of formation of ethanol forming one mole of substance from the elements, all substances in their standard states. That's, that's the bit that people usually forget. Making one mole of substance from the elements, 
all the substances are in their standard states. Carbons are solid, oxygen and hydrogen are gases, and ethanol is a liquid. Okay, so we could go in the other direction now. We could burn everything. We could burn carbon and hydrogen and, and ethanol. Of course, you can't burn oxygen. Um, that would make two CO2s and three H2Os. So that's our <coughs> products of combustion. And now our delta H is the sum of all the delta HCs of reactants minus delta HCs of products. Okay, get all that in there. <coughs> Chair that way. Okay, so again, here you would have been given delta H C data. <coughs> Notice the arrows for, for delta H F data are all going from the elements up to the equation. For delta H C, they're all going down. Three lots of delta H C for hydrogen. Delta H C for ethanol. There. Okay, so just be a little bit careful about how you work them out. Always kind of stop and think before you go, rather than just plugging numbers into a formula mindlessly. What's the data? Because that determines how we work it out. Okay, any questions about any of that? <coughs> right, the next part revolves around what's called calorimetry, literally measuring calories, calories are a unit of energy. And the equation we use is Q equals mc delta T, where Q is the energy in joules, not kilojoules. M is the mass in grams. Be careful, because in physics, you would use kilograms. C is the specific heat capacity of, well, the, the substance absorbing heat which for chemistry is usually water 4.18 joules per kelvin per <coughs> gram <coughs> of course they will give you that uh, and yeah you know, as soon as they as soon as you see that in the question as soon as you see Specific capacity of water equals 4.18 joules per kelvin per gram. You go, okay, I'm using Q equals MC delta T for this question. You can trot that straight out. And delta T, of course, is change in temperature. It doesn't matter if you're using degrees C or Kelvin. The change is just one number minus another number, which is uh, irrespective of, of which unit you're using. Just don't use Fahrenheit. Okay, so a standard Q equals uh, MC delta T question could be um, like the, the reaction we did where we have a polystyrene cup and a thermometer and you measure the temperature of the liquid before and after the reaction. So you measure a um, change in temperature, whatever it is. Um, the M is the mass of liquid heated. So let's say I add 20 centimetres cubed of NaOH to 20 centimetres cubed of HCl. So then the mass would be 40 grams because 40 centimetres cubed of water, <coughs> ignoring the, the HCl and the NaOH because well, we don't know the specific capacity of them anyway. Uh, the total mass in the... In the uh, 
polystyrene cups, 40 grams, and um, C would be 4.18, oops. So Q would be 40 times 4.18 times 12.2. The, the one that sometimes people get wrong is the, is the mass, remember it's the mass of liquid heated that goes in Q equals MC delta T. Uh, what is that? I'm just making up numbers as I go along. I have no idea. 40 times, what do we say? 12.2. 2000 and let's call it 2010. So that's joules. All we need to do then <coughs> is, is convert that into kilojoules per mole. So the first thing to do is to divide by a thousand and get a kilojoules, don't forget that. The second part is to um, get a concentration in. That seems unlikely. Um, uh, so let's say the concentration here was 0. Yeah, whatever. Um, 0.02 moles per dm cube. So then your your final thing is to work out kilojoules. Um, sorry, I've got that completely wrong. Sorry, should make up questions on the fly, should I? Right. Um, concentration equals two moles per dm cubed. I need to work out moles. So moles is CV over a thousand. That's better. That's better. Uh, 0 0.04 moles. And then I need to work out delta H is kilojoules per moles. Of course, if, if these were different, I'd have to work out which was the limiting reactant, which would be quite fiddly. Um, but there we are. 2 divided by 0 0.04 is What do, I, what do I remember to do at this moment? The sign. Uh, it's neutralization. It's minus. Okay. Let's just pop that in the red because that's that's often the bit people <coughs> forget. Uh, and I did just work it out. So when is it plus seven? When it's endothermic. Oh, okay. Fifty point three to three six six. Okay. So how do you know it's endothermic? Then, so how Temperature drops. Okay. Left to itself, an endothermic reaction will always uh, will always drop in temperature. Okay. Okay, and then the <coughs> last bit, go on, yeah. Um, I think there's a question where they give you substance and they give you the mass of the substance and then for the two Right. So. If you do a do a reaction where you sorry, let's have a spirit burner down there, shall we? Uh, <coughs> a red flame. Okay. So yes, if I had some had some alcohol in there and you know a hundred centimeters cubed of water in there then I would have to know the mass of fuel burnt. So if if, uh, if I weighed before and after and 1.2 grams of ethanol was burnt, I would then have to work out moles of ethanol, just whatever it is, and then I put those moles into yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So the tricky bit, when you're burning a fuel and, and you, you sort of look down the question, because you're, you're doing your Q equals MC delta T and you know you need a mass. What's the mass? Oh, it's 1.2 grams. No, it's not. It's 100 grams. Because it's the mass of liquid heated that goes into Q equals MC delta T. You use those grams to work out those moles to work out 
kilojoules per mole at the end. Whatever that is. And that will go into there. Okay. Any other questions? Any good questions? Right, going back to the <coughs> acid base and the polystyrene cup reaction, how do I actually go about doing that experiment? Think think required practical two. Oh, practical two. Is it because you place it in a polystyrene cup because it's a good insulator? Yeah, yeah, but I, that's that's not what I'm getting to. I wanna I wanna know what how, how would you actually set up that experiment? You know, with respect of measuring the temperature before, adding the stuff together, and 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 what? Is anyone else other than? Mass of the like the algae atoms or anything. No, that's not what I'm getting to. I'm adding acid to base, but use a timer. We use a timer. What do we use a timer for? To measure at specific intervals. To measure the temperature. Yeah, so let's say I measure the temperature every every minute for fifteen minutes. The change in temperature. How do I work out the change in temperature from that? So we end up we end up the graph, yeah. This is time, usually usually in in minutes, and the temperature would be along here. Yeah. That's still not quite right. You're right in that you measure the te you usually measure the temperature every minute. So as we're going along, we're measuring the temperature. And of course at the start, the temperatures are probably going to be very similar. It's usually the fourth minute, which isn't quite right on my graph. Anyway, it's usually the fourth minute when you mix the two. You don't measure that. Fourth you minute. don't measure. That's right. You don't <coughs> measure the temperature for the fourth minute. My crosses are all wrong. That's it. That's where yeah. it crosses over. That's where it's if, yeah, you, yeah, you extrapolate that. Too. If things work, you'll add them together. The temperature will whoosh up, but then it'll start to go down, or vice versa. It'll whoosh downwards, and then it'll start to creep back up. And we draw. Two lines of best fit through the data, extrapolating to the fourth minute, and then at the fourth minute, we get our change in temperature. So, required practice, so it's a very common task to assess in, a, in an exam. Either they'll give you the data and ask you to draw the graph and extract delta T from the graph, or very straightforward kind of six marker plan this experiment type task and you're expected to trot out all of those details okay yeah kind of imprint that graph on your on your minds there that's that's um it's a, it's a common task it's even crept into gcse now okay that's all i want to say about that if you've got any other questions then obviously Ask them as I come around. I'm just going to throw a few questions at you. Don't feel you have to do them in order. 